Hi, everyone. Welcome to this WealthManagement.com Fast Chat. I'm David Armstrong, the editor of WealthManagement.com. Today, we're speaking with Matt Brown, the CEO of Case, an alternatives investment platform for independent financial advisors. Matt, thanks very much for joining us. David, it's great to be here, and thanks for having me on Fast Chat. So we know everything that's going on with the markets now, uh, the need for alternatives. We see this in our surveys that we do with advisors. The need for or role for alternative investments is growing amongst advisors. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about why you see that happening, why that's happening, what the need is? Yeah, sure. Uh, and, and again, thanks for inviting me on your uh, your program. You know, this is a real moment in time, uh, what's happening right now. Uh, you're seeing a lot of factors coming together for the first time, uh, driving a rise in the allocation of alternative investments from the advisor community. Um, you know, as you as you know, and many on the on your 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 listening program know, U.S. wealth management is north of forty trillion dollars, uh, and largely comprised of the sixty forty portfolio. Uh, and over the next decade, those numbers are supposed to rise somewhere close to sixty trillion in terms of total wealth management. So not only is the pool getting bigger, but the allocation rates to alts are going up. That's leaning into a reallocation of close to $10 trillion of new capital coming into alternative investments over the next decade. Uh, I just wanted to kind of level set on that because that's going to factor into a lot of what's going on right now. Some of the trends that are driving uh, alts uh, adoption uh, from the advisor perspective uh, are one, somewhat the, the disappointing performance of the traditional 60-40 portfolio. Uh, you're seeing many advisors um, not happy with the uh, with the performance of their client portfolios and looking for no pun intended alternatives, uh, and that is leaning into a more three dimensional portfolio. Um, we're not going to say that institutional allocation rates to alts are going to become overnight present in client portfolios, but it's definitely a journey. You know, demand for alts is one thing, but actually adoption of alts. Uh, is something else. Uh, the advancements in technology, the advancements of educational uh, uh, services that bring usable, digestible content for advisors around alternative investments are actually allowing them to understand in a much deeper way than ever before how to understand strategies and implement. Uh, so, when you think about demand meets accessibility meets education, that's really lifting the advisor's ability to uh, implement a wide range of alternative investments into a client portfolio. Yeah, I, you've spoken in the past about the the new era of access to alternatives, and you know it's one of these things where, given everything that's going on with the markets and, like you say, the the failures really of the sixty forty portfolio, I, I think alternatives would be far more widely used by advisors if there wasn't that friction there, that uh, that difficulty of of use. Uh, explain to me what you mean by the new era of access uh, and what's what's driving that. Yeah, there's a few factors there. Uh, the the new era of access, you know, refers to actually. Uh, two sides of the same coin. It's not only just advisors having for the first time true access to a broad menu of alternative investment funds and products, but also the asset manager community, uh, the alternative asset management community, having now improved access to the wealth community, uh, the advisor community. Um, so when we look at kind of some of the factors that are driving this new era of access, you know, one of them that is not spoken about or talked about much is what's happening in the asset manager community uh, that makes them more attractive to the advisor community. So you have firms now that are investing um, a tremendous amount of money to accommodate the advisor world. Uh, taking an institutional platform in many cases, and now transforming it to understand the needs of a financial advisor. It's a much different audience to cater to. So creating educational materials, uh, investing in the client service teams and sales teams, um, investing uh, in new products that are more kind of, we like to say kind of more wealth friendly. But if you can get access to private equity in a evergreen structure that's open-ended, uh, that is lower investment minimums, that has some opportunities for liquidity along the journey. These are the products that newer advisors are going to start testing the waters with. So this new era of access not only meets the demand from the advisor side, but the asset management community is responding and they're becoming better at catering to the needs of the uh, financial advisor. When we talk about alternatives, particularly on the the new kind of wrappers or structures that you're talking about, it's a wide 
Cool. Uh, uh, there, there's a lot there. Uh, alternatives cover a, a great variety of, of investment options. Uh, you know, and technology, what you guys do is uh, really kind of helping advisors sort through that. Can you just talk about broadly uh, how technology is changing the game for advisors and asset managers? How is what, how does technology for you know? Te- yeah, t- technology has been the you know obviously the huge the, the huge game changer here. Uh, you know, um, alternative investments historically designed for single large investors. Um, not scalable processes. Um, and what tech has done now is really successfully looked at the entire investment journey from the pre-trade experience, uh, which is accessing the product, learning about the product, um, doing the due diligence, that piece, to the trade experience, meaning able to buy it easily through uh, an automated subscription processing uh, 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 technology, all the way through the post-trade experience, which is really the data management document library, or you know the very needed integrations with key ecosystem partners like the custodians, so reporting actually uh, shows up. Uh, so what tech has been able to do is completely modernize the process of investing, making it much easier, much more scalable. Uh, and uh, as we know, financial advisors have a lot on their plate and they don't want to be dragged into the kind of the pl- plumbing and piping of operations every time they want to make a, uh, an investment, an alternative investment fund. So we're able to really, at the case level, uh, take a lot of that pain out. Where do you think this is going in five to 10 years? Are, are alternatives going to be as easy for an advisor to use as an ETF and a mutual fund? Is it going to be that fluid in an advisor's workflow? I, I do think that's the goal. Um, you know, I don't see the end of subscription documents, but I do see the rise of QCIP based or um, ticker symbol based uh, uh, alternative investment funds. We're seeing it now. Um, you know, there's, you know, you mentioned um, structures uh, and wrappers. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in that uh, in that category, uh, trying to figure out how to get the best strategies delivered in the most easy to use uh, investment structures or wrappers. Um, we've seen the rise of you know, ticker symbol interval funds, as an example. Uh, you're seeing kind of short form sub doc, uh, non-traded REITs and non-traded BDCs. Um, these are all easier ways to invest structurally. Um, and some of those structures, of course, have um, the opportunity uh, for some liquidity along the journey. Uh, which is also making it a, a more palatable. Um, there's, you know, we always kind of joke if we can all get on an airplane uh, with a TSA number and somehow that's convinced everyone that we're not bad people. Um, I actually think there has to become a day where we can use a number to invest in a fund. Uh, so a pre qualification number where an, you know, an investor has gone through the AML KYC. Uh, has has their accreditation verified, and that should be able to be used whether you're investing in Blackstone, Apollo, Carlyle, or any other fund. Uh, so there are advancements on the drawing board to make this just a lot easier than it is, but that is the push right now. If you look at where a majority of the capital is going to be coming from over the, over the next decade, and let's just say it is up to $10 trillion of capital coming out of the traditional side, the vast majority of that money is gonna, not going to come from existing alt users. It's going to come from the broad universe of advisors and their end clients who have never actually invested in alts. And their first products are not going to be the more sophisticated, longer lockup drawdown vehicles. They're going to start with things they recognize and that are easy to invest in. Yeah, we recently saw that study of uh, KKR thinking that uh, maybe up to 50% of their fund raising is going to come from the private wealth channel. Um, I mean, it's an amazing turnaround. I'm going to give you a chance to talk a little bit about case specifically. You mentioned that you know technology broadly is helping advisors navigate this world and uh, weigh options and, and figure out uh, how to invest in these products. Uh, how, what does case do for advisors, and how would you differentiate what you do from some of the others out there? Yeah, sure. You know, in terms of the broad, you know, the field of others out there, you know, we're we're very much supportive and a champion of anyone who wants to kind of be disruptive and, and, and make the advisor uh, experience better. Uh, you know, the system is 
uh, archaic uh, right now in terms of alternative investments. It will change over time, and we welcome everybody who wants to be part of that journey to to jump in and make a contribution. Um, you know, Case really has uh, two businesses. Um, we have what we call our marketplace business, where an advisor can log on to our platform, can seek and search for different funds by strategy, by wrapper, uh, and they can build a portfolio. And that menu exists. It's all pre-due diligence by Mercer, which is a third-party uh, checks and balance that's built in. You know, not many RAs have a, of the strength of a due diligence team that they can always rely on, and that really helps uh, solve that issue. Um, then on the marketplace, they can uh, transact seamlessly, uh, and then they have a full post-trade experience. Um, and that's kind of our end-to-end marketplace. That can be curated and tailored. So if you're oftentimes one of the larger firms like an IBD or a larger aggregator, and you want to kind of look at the menu of funds and say, okay, we just don't want all of it, but we want some, or the technology journey has to be woven into the technology platform that exists within the firm. We we do all of that. So it's either an end-to-end or a customized journey on our marketplace. The newer part of our business is uh, what we're calling solutions. And that's really recognizing that our marketplace may not meet the need of every advisor. Uh, so the technology componentry that makes up our marketplace is being pulled apart and being delivered in part to different advisors. So let's say, for example, that you're an RIA or an IBD uh, that has historically done a lot of vaults yourself. Maybe you don't need due diligence teams. Maybe you don't need a product menu. You have your own. But what you really need is a trade or a post-trade experience for the funds that you have. Uh, That SaaS business allows you to use our technology for your products. It's an off-the-shelf way to really get our chassis of our technology and bring it to the benefit of your business. And so as we think about the journey of case, we'll be evolving our SaaS product menu over time, delivering different features and services that you can uh, uh, get access to in a bespoke way, or you can enter into our marketplace uh, and uh, see what's available there. Well, it's exciting stuff. And and I'd be remiss in not pointing out the uh, educational material that you all have too for uh, advisors uh, kind of at, at any point of experience uh, that advisors have or sophistication with this stuff. Uh, there's something there. Yeah, the Case IQ platform, it's called Case IQ, as you know. So the Case IQ platform was a real commitment uh, starting, you know, four years ago, five years ago, when we realized that, um, you know, just solving the operational and technical elements of making it easier um, or bringing access isn't going to get the job done. You really have to get to the core issue, which is there is a, for the most part, Um, a need for improved learning around alternative investments. Advisors need to have more um, confidence in implementation, more confidence in speaking to their clients about alternatives. And so we realized very quickly that we both have to be not only a a product menu and platform, but we really have to be in the education business. Uh, So we've invested millions of dollars in a state-of-the-art learning platform. And we've actually found that some firms now um, are actually mandating learning prior to investing. So if you're part of a firm and that uses the case platform for alternatives, they may bake in at the home office level, some rules of the road that says, okay, advisor, if you, before you invest in the XYZ private equity fund, take the fundamentals course on private equity, and then also the, the course on the fund. Uh, and then that will unlock your ability to buy the fund or invest in the fund on behalf of your clients. That's fantastic. Uh, Matt, exciting stuff. Uh, congratulations with all the success that Case has had. Uh, it's a, a new era of investing here beyond the 60-40 for sure. It's That's coming. New era of access. Absolutely. Thanks very much for joining us. This has been David Armstrong, WealthManagement.com Fast Chat. Talk to you soon. David, thanks so much. Take care.